Donna, I understand that some of the lost Canadians are actually infants who have been made stateless by the new uh, Bill C-37, which was uh, became law in April 2009. Can you explain that to me? Yes. Um, let's take our latest lost Canadian, a little girl by the name of Rachel Chandler. Rachel happened to be born to a father who was not born in Canada. The father was second generation born abroad. So in essence, Rachel was born in China, out of wedlock, to a Chinese mother and a Canadian father. So this child is stateless. Now, that can happen. And uh, we, we really should be tweaking the law ever so slightly just to change it so that the father is deemed to be born in Canada so he can go in front of a citizenship judge and prove that his life substantially was in Canada and all immigrant Canadians are deemed to be born in Canada so we should be able to do that with somebody who's a Canadian citizen as long as they really have a connection to Canada so if they go before a citizenship judge the father should have been deemed to be born in Canada thus this problem goes away can, can you, I, I'm not really sure what you mean uh, what's, who's the father and what's his connection to Canada? The father uh, was born in Libya to a father that had been an immigrant uh, to Canada from Ireland. So the, uh, the, the grandfather of Rachel, if you will, uh, the grandfather was the immigrant Canadian, and then he happened to be traveling and was gone out of Canada when his son uh, was born, and then his son was over in China when his daughter was born. So. All of these people really have a great connection to Canada. I am not looking at this to fix a problem where we have citizenship of convenience because, frankly, I agree. People that are just using Canada should not be Canadian citizens. But in this case, we really have strong connections to Canada. And immigrant Canadians have all been deemed to have been born in Canada uh, when they become Canadians. If we have people that have been born outside of Canada, uh, if they could go before a citizenship judge and prove their connection to Canada just like an immigrant Canadian would, then in fact they should also be deemed to be born in Canada. Thus we don't perpetuate a problem and make people stateless. But if we do, by chance, end up making people stateless, and this is the Refugees magazine uh, talking about the strange hidden world of the stateless, people who have been excluded, and it's pretty much all a third world country until you get dead center in the magazine and we look and there are the lost Canadians. Now this problem has been virtually fixed except for these second born generation children. If we ever do get a child that is truly stateless like Rachel Chandler, then the answer is very simple. Canada is currently wanting to make her an immigrant Canadian and she has to wait three years to get her citizenship. Well basically, not basically, very much, is that any Canadian can pretty much adopt any child anywhere in the world and that child will be Canadian in six weeks. So Rachel, father's, uh, Rachel Chandler's father, um, he cannot adopt his own child, so he'd have to abandon her and then any Canadian could adopt her and make her Canadian in six weeks which just doesn't make sense. Canada is too good of a country to allow this child to be stateless for three years. So really, when we, when we end up with a stateless child, we should be able to make this child Canadian in six weeks. And really, a very small tweak of the law fixes the problem going forward. Uh, we do not change anything for citizenship of convenience. And then, if we do create a stateless child, we fix it and give citizenship within six weeks problem solved. It appears right now that that's asking too much of the citizenship minister uh, because we've been asking him to fix this and we don't get anything. So hopefully he'll maybe have a change of heart.